What's up everybody? It's your girl Brandy Harvey. I am so excited that you decided to join us for this amazing conversation. I mean, I'm like about to spill out of my seat, but here's what I need you to do. I need you to like, I need you to subscribe and join the Vault Village because just like every other month, we cover our five pillars. This month is no different. We're talking personal development. So if you are ready for this conversation, I know I am. Buckle up your seatbelts. David Shands. Let's go. I'm so excited to talk to you. I'm excited to be here. I mean, podcaster, podcast yes. masterclass creator, <laughs> sleep is for suckers, podcast summit creator. True. Husband, so true. father, creator yeah. of really big ideas. Yeah. And a teacher. Yes. Welcome to Vault Empowers. I am happy to be here, man. I think what you're doing in the world, you, it's hard to quantify the impact of someone who watches one of your episodes and then they go out and empower tens of thousands of people. Yeah. And some of those people go empower. So it's, it's really, really a appropriate name for uh, Vault Empowers. Vault Empowers. Yeah. But Social Proof Podcast. This is kind of your claim to fame, I believe. It is. I think Sleep is for Suckers kind of puts you on the map. Yeah. And then we got Social Proof Podcast. Birthed out of chaos, though. So. Yeah, and confusion. You, and confusion. Multi million dollar business, but you didn't no. start there. No. Take me back to 2002 <laughs> to. 2010 yeah. when your life was complete chaos you were a rapper he was a rapper y'all oh he gosh. was dropping a few bars <laughs> he got arrested for a few hours terrifying you know, experience worked at olive garden <laughs> led you to cheesecake factory yeah. and then social proof yes talk about the years of chaos that led here yeah so um it's like after I graduated high school 2002, right? From at that point, you're a child. You're yeah. you're playing basketball. You got these these big <laughs> dreams, and then 2002, I graduate high school and I go to college, and it's still somewhat of a game. Yeah, you want to become something, and you're excited because you're young and you got time. But fast forward to 2010. At that point, I am 26, 25, 26, yeah. and I'm not a kid anymore. Mm -hmm. So these big ideas of going to the NBA, it's over. This big idea of me being a rapper, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't think I'm going to be a rapper. <laughs> I wasn't good at selling drugs. It was like, I, like all these things. And now I just got to figure it out. And I'm wherever I can make a dollar, I'm doing that. Like mm -hmm. if, I, if it's selling t-shirts or buying fake uh, Air Force Ones and selling those and making money or like you're trying you were that to- that guy. Oh my, I, for sure. <laughs> you were selling fake for Air Force Ones. For sure. <laughs> and it, it, it becomes, you get to a point and it's, okay, what is going to happen? I had these ideas of becoming successful and you try stuff and it doesn't work out, try stuff and it yeah. doesn't work out for years. Yeah. And that plays on your mental because not everybody has the mindset of, well, I'm just it has to work or it has to work yeah. or this is going to work out. Sometimes it's like, well, maybe success isn't for me. Mm. And I want to be an entrepreneur this whole time and I find myself having a conversation with my manager saying, okay, what does it take to be a manager here? This and is I, at Cheesecake Factory. At the Cheesecake Factory, mm -hmm. yeah. I talked to one guy that was a man. He just newly got promoted to be a manager, and he's, he's like saying, yeah, man, you know, make 60000 But he works all day, wow. all week. You get a couple of days off a week, but those just long hours. And I started to give up on the idea. Like, how can I become this multimillionaire? I'm starting to give up on it, and I'm settling for, okay, what is the process of becoming a manager at the Cheesecake yeah. Factory? It's frustrating, man. Yeah. It's frustrating. Trying to become a manager at the Cheesecake Factory. And then you have this idea. Yeah. And you say, I'm gonna sell 200 t-shirts a month. Yes. And I'm just gonna set a goal of $4,000. Yes. And you said during that time, you began to keep your word to yourself. Yes. Here was, here was where I messed up. When I first got the job, I realized that I never stayed anywhere for 10 months. I never had a, a job longer than 10 months. My first job working at Foot Action, 10 months. <laughs> Olive Garden, 10 months. I was working at the, on the turnpike, like selling ice cream, less than 10 months. Olive mm. Garden, less than 10 months, everything. And then I started to look at it. All of my relationships up until this point 
none of them last longer than 10 months. Mm. So I'm trying to be this entrepreneur, but I keep losing the jobs because I'll start a business, it starts working a little bit, and I'll quit the job and I start doing that, but the business didn't last longer than 10 months either. So I told myself, I'm going to be here. Mm. I'm, I'm going to figure out how to stay somewhere and be consistent in something. So the declaration that I had, because I've tried a whole bunch of ideas. This is the first time I said, I got this idea for this t-shirt brand called Sleep is for Suckers, and I'm gonna do this until it works, period. And even if it doesn't work, I'll be proud of myself for doing the same thing for over a year, yeah. two years, three. I yeah. just had this vision of me being in the game for three, four years. Yeah. And that's when everything started to change. That's when everything started to yeah. change. Yeah, because it wasn't about the outcome. It wasn't about the outer result. It was about me being satisfied and doing what I say I'm going to do to my for myself. It wasn't about how many shirts I can sell. What if I can ask 10 people every single day? That's something 100% in my control. I can't control you taking money out of your pocket and buying a shirt. Yeah. But I can control me saying, today, I'm going to make sure I ask 10 people to buy this shirt. Whether they buy it or not, I'm gonna come home satisfied because I kept my word to myself. Yeah. And things started to change drastically. You think that's where people go wrong? They just don't keep their word to themselves? 100%. To themselves. 100%. Yeah. Because it's about the outer result, which you can't control. You can't control like your business blowing up. You can't. <laughs> you can only control yeah. the activity and sometimes your attitude. So somebody, I think it was John Addison, he said, you can only control two things, your attitude and your activity. What you do and how you feel about what you do. None of the other stuff is in your control. Yeah. You might be with somebody for a long time, you can't control them marrying you or not. <laughs> you can just ask the questions. You, you can have, just ask the questions. You can only control what you do. Yeah. You stay, great, you gotta live with that decision. If you leave, you gotta live with that decision. But the only thing you control are your decisions. And I stopped focusing on my outer result and started focusing on me. Can I do what I say I'm gonna do? And that's the consistency. 100%. And that's where people lose it all the time. Absolutely. They just won't stay consistent. Absolutely. I, I recently sat through your podcast uh, masterclass webinar. Thank you. And I did. It was really, really good. From a teacher to another teacher, I could see like you have the passion and the know-how to teach people. And one of the things that you talked about was how people jump ship so much, right? Mm -hmm. Every six weeks, they build in something new it's <laughs> a new business yeah. what was it that clicked in your mind outside of the four thousand dollar a month goal that said i am not going to build anything else but this um because i wanted to get i think what clicked was my realization of me focusing on me being a better person and me having the ability to build something meaning through this process of me asking 10 people uh, most of the people say no, but now I go home, it's over. Yeah. But then I started asking more often. So the first day I'm like, all right, I did what I'm supposed to do. The 10th day after 100, you start to recognize patterns. You start to, um, I'm starting to study the art of persuasion. I'm starting to study body language. So when I say, would you like to buy a shirt? And they say, nah, I'm asking, okay, well, why not? <laughs> Why you not? got follow-up questions. Yeah, yeah. Okay. follow-up questions. <laughs> the first day, though, is just about doing the work. But every day that you do the work, as long as you improve, mm. you'll start to see more fruit from the, out, from yeah. the results. Yeah. So my objective was I want to build this brand. I want it to be successful, obviously. But my first objective is me becoming a successful person, me adopting the traits of success, mm -hmm. which is consistency, which is my ability to communicate. How I feel when someone says no? Do I just say, oh, okay, no, okay, I'm, I, I'll, uh, okay, you say no and you walk away, or can I start to challenge that a little bit? You wouldn't be, you'd be surprised how many people, when I say, well, why not? And we start having a conversation, then they buy. Yeah. But I wouldn't get that unless I was in the game for long enough and then I just became better at asking. Yeah. And then I got more results. But the, the, the focus wasn't the results. It was how can I be better? And then start working out. And it started working out. It's just, it just takes a long time so people don't want to do that. It takes a long time. It takes a long time. But you said that when you started 
the social proof podcast it was really not that you were starting a podcast for sure you wanted to host an event yeah and you said that everyone needs to practice hearing their own voice yeah so you got a lot of practice hearing your own voice <laughs> asking the question yeah why do you say that because most people don't want to watch the tape back on themselves yeah. most people don't want to listen to their own voice so how did you become comfortable in doing that um, well, I wasn't comfortable because, you know, you hear your own voice and you're like, oh, I hate the way I sound. <laughs> or you start noticing little nuances about yourself that you absolutely hate. It's almost like you do a whole interview and there's like lettuce in your teeth and you're like, oh my gosh, every time I smile, I see it. <laughs> I'm saying like a million times. Yeah. So, so Brandy, like, you know how you like, like, if you like, you like, like, you go to the store, right? And you like, like, and I started hearing it. I'm like, I'm cringing. cringing. Like, oh, and, yeah. and I know it's coming up. It's yeah. coming up. It's coming. Ah, I said it again. <laughs> I'm cringing. Yeah. Um, but now I have that information. My next interview, I'm yeah, being I mean, conscious of the likes. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we all do. We yeah. all have to watch the tape back. Yeah. I don't want to at all, but <laughs> I know that in order for me to get better, baby, yeah. you got to sit through it. Yeah. You got to sit through it. But most people only watch the views. Oh. or the monetization or oh. they don't they're saying okay well this isn't working but it's not that this isn't working it's an element in it which is you hasn't grown to the level to be able to produce something that will work yeah so if we're only looking at the views we're looking at why isn't it working in the state that it's at but if you get better at it more people will be engaged i got a whole formula on how i interview now but it took me years to develop it uh, yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. You talk about it in your webinar. Yeah. So for all those people who want a little more knowledge on starting <laughs> their podcast, David Shantz has a wonderful program. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. you are teaching the people because you have a goal yeah. of educating 100,000 podcasters. Yeah. You want to empower 100,000 podcasters to start a podcast mm -hmm. because you believe the podcasters will take over media. Absolutely. Yeah. At what point in our- I never heard that before yeah. you said it. Like, think about it. At what point in our world has this many people been willing to listen to one voice on a regular basis, yeah. weekly, bi-weekly, outside of church? Yeah. Like the church has had the most yeah. power in our community because it's one person that you listen to, you like, you respect every single week. Yeah. So you begin to listen to that, that person's voice and respect it and start to adopt their philosophies. And when you see them in the grocery store, you're like, yo, that, <laughs> that sermon that you, you gave, right? It was for me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and now we're experiencing yeah. it because people are willing to listen to voices. Not, I believe podcasts are gonna be the next celebrities. Cause you watch someone play basketball, you might be a LeBron fan, but after the game is over, it doesn't empower you in any way. You might yeah. like the way you, or yeah. somebody that does uh, music, they might drop an album. You rock out to that album for a couple of weeks, but after a while, you're listening to somebody else. Yeah. Podcasters though, there's some people that are waiting every single month. It will soon be every single week. <laughs> and they'll, they'll wrap their He's schedule. He's life into the show. Oh, Y'all didn't, didn't get it. Cause this is, just... this is incredible. You're good at it. <laughs> Thank you. You're really good. <laughs> Yeah, but but if you really think about it, uh, we're in a very unique time where people respect people for what they have to say. Yeah. Years ago, people respected people for what they look like on Instagram. So if you looked a certain way, fellas, you if a, a woman with those aesthetics, they get a big following. Period. Yes. Period. Just because yes. the way you look. Yeah. But now it's if you have something valuable to say, oh, people follow cult following and it's deeper than watching someone that's a movie star saying I like what you did but now it's like I like what you said I like yeah. how you made me feel so yeah. in the next few years voices will control the world so it's no longer about influence it's about impact right for sure well influence too but the way people have uh, um, uh, labeled influencers are based off of a follower count yeah but influence means I can influence you to do something that you otherwise wouldn't have done. Yeah. So influencers are powerful, it's just not in the way that we define them now. So if you can empower someone to go change their life, you can influence someone, you're a true influencer. Yeah. And those are the people that people are gonna follow. Those are the people that people are gonna follow. Mm -hmm. Now, do you believe that the market is too saturated? Because when you look at Instagram, I swear everybody got a microphone. <laughs> For sure. 
I mean, if I swear folks is just putting themselves in front of a microphone yeah. at their house and just recording to make it look like yeah. they got a podcast. For sure. <laughs> so do you think that for those 100,000 people that you want to empower, how do you tell them that the market is not saturated? Yes. Them? I mean, not even close. Podcasting is what, 15 years old? That's young. Yeah. How many, how many people do you follow on Instagram? I think like probably about, it's over a thousand people. You follow a thousand. But subjective with perspective, okay? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so how many people do you follow? How many people do you follow on Instagram? About 2,000. I probably follow 7,000. Yeah. How many podcasters do you follow? Or how many shows are you subscribed to? Oh, I probably don't... three. No, I think Maybe I'm subscribed. Four. I'm subscribed to about eight shows. Eight. Eight shows, which is a lot. Yeah, between YouTube and and, and Spotify. Right. Yeah. But but when we start talking about Instagram, we don't say Instagram is saturated, even though I'm following thousands of people, yeah. and yeah. I'll never see their content. Yeah. Yeah. But you've decided to say I'm going to subscribe so that every time yeah. they release something, I see it. Yeah. That gives the person that you're subscribing to power yeah. because you have to make a conscious decision not only to subscribe, but now you're getting you're saying, I want to be notified when this person yeah. does something. How many people are you subscribed to on Instagram that you get a notification? Not many. Not you don't all. even see a, you see a percentage of the people that you follow. That you follow. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, it's not it's not even close to saturation just because everybody starts a podcast. The average person is only going to do seven episodes and stop. Wow. Wow. Didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Okay, so the average person is only doing seven episodes. Yes. Yeah. But here you are, you started your podcast, and you said, well, you started off as a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. But you said from 2010, those were your years of clarity and growth. Yeah. You had a mindset shift. Yeah. But from 2000 to 18 to present, this is purpose and abundance. Yeah. So what got you to purpose and abundance? Because you once said that you thought success was a gated community that you were not going to get into. Yeah. Um, I How'd think you get I, in? <laughs> uh, consistency, uh, work ethic, understanding that um, if I focus on me, the result will take care of itself. For a long time, I'm just trying to go get the money. And it just continued to run away from me. But then I said, well, one, I'm like, I'm super blessed. Outside of like anything that I have, God has blessed me tremendously. Hmm. My cousin and I used to sell weed together and uh, neither one of us was really good at it. But <laughs> I went to school in Alabama. I got a, 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 the Alabama a and called me and said, hey, you got accepted to college. I didn't even remember filling out the application. And then my mom told me, I was like, I don't, I didn't fill out an application. And I remember one day they was in the office, the guy had me fill out some paperwork and I was like, all right, cool. So that was the school. Yeah. So I leave Jersey. I go to school in Alabama. My cousin stays in New Jersey and he moves to another part of New Jersey and he becomes a successful drug dealer. But unfortunately it didn't end well. Mm -hmm. And I wound up lost losing my cousin, which one of the, one of the closest people to me at that time. But I can't explain how God saw it fit that I leave the environment and go to Alabama, especially when I didn't want to go. Yeah. And that kind of stuff has followed me through. Like, yeah. how can you explain oh, when yeah. someone comes into your life and impacts you and empowers yeah. you? Like, you can't control that. Yeah. So I, I got to a point where um, I felt blessed to have what I have. Even once I woke up and figured out, yo, God gave me this job three and a half years later. Working at the Cheesecake Factory is a blessing. Once I realized that, I said, I'm blessed anyway. I'm gonna go after some stuff, but if I don't get it, it's okay because God allows me to have success. God allows me to have whatever I have. Yeah. There's certain things that I don't believe I can control. And once I, I understood that appreciation for what God has given me, um, everything just started to open up because it wasn't about the result anymore. It's like, let me just be a better steward over what be I have. Be a better steward. And um, I mean, it, I, I was consistently working and anything you do consistently, it begins to get better. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been incredible. And I, I got to a point where um, I figured out some things about life and business and myself, and that's a whole journey. 
And eventually it started working out. But then I realized the purpose and abundance. You want this thing so bad, a certain dollar amount or something, and you think it's going to make you happy. But I realized that that thing will never make you as happy as you think it's going to make you, no matter what it is. Yeah. If you get married, whatever that feeling is you think you're going to feel when you get married, <laughs> it's not going to feel like that when you get there. You want to make $100,000 or a million dollars, you're like, oh, everything is going to change yeah. when you get there. It's not going to feel yeah. like that. So I, one, and maybe this is counterproductive to a motivational speech, but I'm not so into the future of what I'm go what it's going to feel like when I have it. I just want to be in the moment and do the best that I can with the gifts that God has given me right now. So that's why I say it's like purpose and abundance because it's not about, I realize that whatever I think I want, I'm not going to want it as much as I think it. I, yeah. I want it once I get it. Yeah. So that's been life change for me. So I just, I watched this interview that Oprah did many years ago with Marianne Wil Williamson. Mm -hmm. And she's the author of Return to Love. And she has this book of prayers called Illuminata. You know, <laughs> black folks will say Illuminati. It's the <laughs> Illuminata. <Right>. Okay. <laughs> but she did this book of prayers. And one of the things that Oprah said is that she began to pray that God take her to the highest level that he would see fit her life to go. Mm. The highest level. Yeah. And so, in truth, when I hear you say that, it's really that you did away with trying to chase a dollar, which most people do, yeah. right? Because so many of us, we're chasing the bag, I gotta get to the bag, yeah. where the money at, it's the era of the city girls and cash at me <laughs> for every little thing, yeah. right? But when you take that focus and you shift that internally, right? That's when you see that divine awakening in your life. Uh -huh. And that's what you saw with Purpose and Abundance Absolutely. after 2018. Man, yeah. I, I read a quote that said, uh, people spend their whole life, celebrities spend their whole life uh, wanting to be known, and then they get known and wear dark, sh dark shades to avoid being noticed. <laughs> to avoid it, because nobody, you just, I think you want your gift yeah. to be the thing. You're just chasing the gift getting bigger. Yeah. But what comes along with that is the fame. And now with social media, yeah. the you being recorded when you don't even think you're being recorded, <laughs> right? You're being recorded. So you had a shift in your success mindset. And so if you were to go back 2018, what was the shift? Besides consistency, what was that shift in your mindset? Um, one of them was, uh, um, that there's more out there to be had mm -hmm. and um, it's okay to want to go after more right I I thought it was um, I thought it was not benevol benevolent but uh, what is it more um, I just thought it was like more wholesome to just want to impact people yeah. and not build a business yeah you know what I mean yeah. I thought yeah. maybe God would be more pleased if yeah. I'm not going after <laughs> wanting more. But I, I knew I couldn't help people if I couldn't really help myself. Somebody told me that $100,000 a year is probably the most selfish goal that you can accomplish because that's enough to take care of you and you have a good life. Yeah. But I'm like, yo, how can I get more to impact more people? To impact could, more people. Yeah, it was like, I mean, it was just an awakening. It's okay to be successful. You yeah. can be successful. It's going to yeah. be fine. Because then you can do more 100%. for more. Yep. Do absolutely. more for more. So you said that you teach three traits of wealthy people. Yeah. And I think this is probably where your 2018 mindset yeah. took a shift. Mm -hmm. Because you said that wealthy people, number one, take action. Mm -hmm. Number two, have an investment. And number three, attention. Yeah. You said people's propensity to be easily distracted keeps them stuck. Oh, for sure. Yeah. How'd you remove the distractions? Uh, I don't think you can remove the distractions. You can just... <laughs> work around them? You got to work around them. <laughs> work around Try them. not to pay as much attention <laughs> yeah. to them. Yeah. Um, we are attracted to distractions. Yes, we are. So, oh my God. <laughs> Listen. So you, do, you definitely have to put safeguards around your, like sometimes I'll leave my phone on the charger upstairs in my room when I'm downstairs with my children. Hmm. Because if it's downstairs with me, then I'm gonna be distracted. And my, my daughter, Sarai, she'll take the phone out of my hand and <laughs> say, no daddy, and she'll, she's done it, Matt, like she'll take it and throw it. Yeah. 
because she knows that that has my attention. Yeah. And that's a reminder to be present. Yeah. But the one of the worst things that can happen for an entrepreneur is to get a little bit of success. Because with a little bit of success, you start feeling yourself like, oh, this is working for me. Yeah. And then other people come with opportunities. Yeah. And you're like, oh, well, I started building this successfully. I could do that too. Yeah. Oh, I'm an expert in this field. Yeah. And now you're distracted yeah. from the thing that you started growing initially. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think for sure, attention is uh, uh, something that's it's easy to say. But it's really, really hard to yeah. not be distracted, Very. especially when you like the distractions. The distractions always look so good, y'all. Oh my god! They come with all your all your wants and needs. Come right? on, man. Your distractions come just how you like mm-hmm. it, you know. Just as tall as you <laughs> like them. <huh? laughs> just as tall, <laughs> just as thin, tight as you like them. That's how the distraction shows up. Uh, just... Listen, they always show up. Mine always show up fit and fine. I told this to Darius Daniels, <laughs> and I was like, I know people was like, did she just tell the pastor that her distraction show up fit and fine? Oh, yes, for I sure. did. Pray for me. Smelling <laughs> good. <laughs> Say you created that fragrance, okay? (laughs) They always do. But you know, one of the things that Darius Daniel said when I interviewed him was, you know, that we think that everything and everybody is assigned to us. Mm. And we end up taking on assignments that don't belong to us. Oh, you talking good. (laughs) Mm. We end up taking on assignments that don't belong to us. And that's usually what the distractions show up as. They sometimes show up as opportunities. Oh, for sure. And we think like, oh wait, they got, they got 25 racks over here for me. That looks like my opportunity. Mm -hmm. They got 50. This is, it seems like an opportunity. Absolutely. But it's really taking you off your purpose. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you have to really chart a path and know where you're going. Especially for entrepreneurs, um, you have to like kind of, we all want to do a bunch of stuff and like that ambitious thing, yeah. like y'all want to shoot movies yeah. and I want to do podcasts <laughs> and I want to do all this stuff. Yeah. And I think it's important to create a list of all the things we want to do and separate them. Meaning, these are the things that I'm going to do this year. Mm. But also you have to take those other things and say, these are the things that I'm not going to touch right now. So we all say what That's we're going to so do. hard. So hard. I mean, but we, it, it's, it's, it's really simple when you actually sit down and do it. Because now you have to say out of your mouth, okay, I do want to write a script and do a movie, but I'm not, I'm declaring and decreeing right now, <laughs> I am not doing it this year. Yeah. And that kind of helps because you said, okay, well, once I get that feeling that I'm going to do this thing again, no movies this year. I'm only focused on this particular path. Yeah. So you have to like literally out your mouth and see all the things that you're telling yourself you're not going to do. If not, it's just all in your head and then it seems shiny. Yeah. But when it comes up, you remember that little list you had. Like, I, next year, next yeah. year. Next so year. So I, I have to do that often. You do. What's yeah. the one thing that you're holding off till next year? Oh my gosh. I want to shoot a movie <laughs> for sure. Oh my gosh. I want to shoot a movie so bad. Yeah. Um, I definitely got, I got, I got a whole list of things. I want to like buy a building and do like different things. I want to buy a restaurant. And but the restaurant is like a networking type vibe where people okay. come to eat and stuff like that. I just can't do it this year. Next year. It's not that I can't, but it will take me off the path. Mm. So right now I'm I'm all in on podcast education. And you could see what someone's about based on their activity. So we, me and my my partner Donnie, we just bought a building yeah. that we're building out podcasting suites and then there's an event space in the back. But my objective is to give people an opportunity to have their own space, their own creative space, where they ain't got to keep breaking down and setting up. That's you got your own key card, you go. Yeah. I'm I'm really locked in on this podcast yeah. education space. Yeah. So we got a podcast summit come up, podcast mastermind, all that stuff. So that's the lane I'm in. So the restaurant just doesn't fit into that. Yeah. Yeah. It takes off, it takes away from the impact. Yeah. Talk about impact and staying the course. 2011, you launched your YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. From 2011 to 2020, I just want to say you are not a pandemic preneur. <laughs> no, man. Okay, you are not I've one of the people here. who said, 2020, <laughs> God gave me a vision. Right. <laughs> 2011, you have a YouTube channel yeah. and it doesn't make any money. No. I'm, I'm in my one bedroom apartment making videos. And you can look it up. They're really good videos too, Entrepreneurship 101 videos. Yeah. And um, yeah, I started, the first video I shot, I think it was 2010 actually, when I first started the brand. 
And I remember being in my living room, making this video and going to work tomorrow, the next yeah. day. But I, I just, I kept creating this content, but it didn't make any money. The crazy thing is I didn't even know it could make money. I didn't, wasn't even thinking there's a relationship between me making these videos and making money. Yeah. I'm just producing the content. Mm -hmm. I'm just producing the content. And I'm glad I didn't think YouTube paid because if I knew that, I wouldn't be expecting it. Meaning that first six months that it doesn't make any money, I'd have quit. Mm -hmm. Because I'm doing this because it makes money. Yeah. First is me doing it because I have a message to get out into the yeah. world. But consistently just, uh, well, inconsistently kind of in and out. But as soon as I got consistent with like the idea, I think 2019, 2020, it started making money. Yeah. And it's never stopped since. And you're even making money off of that old content oh, yeah. that didn't make money when it first started. A hundred percent. Yeah. You're there are videos money. that I've shot three, four years ago that pay me today. Yeah. So that's why I encourage everybody. You never know. Like you'll have a catalog of stuff. The first interview that, re that did really well, <clears throat> sorry, you need some more that did really well was uh, my man Wall Street Trapper's video. So I interviewed Wall Street Trapper and people loved that interview mm. and everybody started watching it's going crazy. Well, what happened was an interview I did like 10 interviews before that began to get most of the traction. It even outperformed Trap's video. An interview that I did 10 interviews before the one that brought the people, mm. that's the one that started to grow. Mm. But we don't think about that. We think about the thing that I'm doing now, it needs to pay me now. now. It needs to be popular now. Yeah. And I already understand how it works. There's gonna be some things that I do to ne like now, next year that are gonna go crazy. Yeah. Somebody's gonna discover it. It's gonna take a year for them to discover yeah. it, but <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, for a long time, it didn't make a dime. So what do you tell the entrepreneur who is starting and stopping every six weeks, every six months, Every time somebody comes with a new yeah. distraction, yeah. they jump on it. How do you tell them to have that stick to itness? I can just tell them stop stopping. <laughs> 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 but some some people are just so ambitious and mm. they they let their feelings take them wherever it's going to take them. Mm. So um, you feel like y'all want to do this and you're going to do it. I can't stop somebody from doing that, but it's going to have to take a level of maturity for you to like wait something out. Mm -hmm. the, the entrepreneurs who start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. That's showing up in another area of your life. I just don't know where. Yeah. Maybe it's diet. Maybe it's going to the gym. Maybe it's relationships. That's, that's a trait. That's who you are. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I stop and start businesses. You stop and start stuff. Yeah. And if you look through their life, you'll see that that happens on a regular basis in other areas. So I don't know how to tell someone that the longer you do something, the better you get at it, the better you get at it, the closer you are to success. I don't know how to tell somebody that because I'm not with them every day. And they got to understand how to control their emotions and stop following everything. You can't just do everything you want to do if you want to be successful. Yeah. So, so you recently um, did a new interview model mm -hmm. um and you interviewed your the guy who does your flyers yeah. the young guy who does some of yeah. your collateral material yeah. and it was a really interesting conversation yeah. and you talked to him about consistency yeah. and you were like but i'm asking you for things that it's taking you a week to get to me yeah. and i don't even want to recommend you to someone else because i know that you're going to show up yeah. in that same way yeah i really enjoyed that because i think that so many young people don't get how their work ethic and how they show up yeah. play into how people are going to speak your name in yeah. those rooms yeah or yeah. recommend you yeah he, i mean kids 20 years old i met him when he was 18. yeah he's got a lot of growing to do and you said he's grown a lot. Yeah, oh, he's grown tremendously. Yeah. Tremendously. Like, when I was his age, I was a knucklehead. I wasn't <laughs> even, he's, le he's like, and shout out to Travion, um, he's leaps and bounds above where I was at his yeah. age. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And by the time kind of he gets to his mid-late 20s, yeah. he's, 
if he continues the path that he's going right now, he is going to be more successful than he can imagine. Yeah. But the reason that I'm doing those episodes and uh, kind of these kind of conversations is because we've got to find the gap in what we're doing. So when I started the podcast, there weren't there, there wasn't a lot of this. Like you're interviewing influencers or entrepreneurs or it was like the, the only interviews you found were on the radio. Yeah. And those are five, 10 minute like you, you interview, Sound ask questions. Bites. Yeah. You ask questions for six minutes. Yeah. And then there's a song. Yeah. There's an ad. Then they come back with a whole nother conversation. So there wasn't a lot of what we're doing right now. But now there is. Yeah. Everybody's interviewing everybody. Well, now I got to find something else. I got to find a, I got to find another gap because it's like you'll be able to, I can interview have you been on have you been interviewed before on your just show? period no just period yes all the time all the time yeah back in 2018 it wasn't a whole lot of that where we can sit down and talk for an hour yeah but now we'll see you everywhere so I could do an interview I think our interview will do amazing and I do want to have you on the show for <laughs> sure but I, me as a creator and a podcaster I'm always trying to find what is the gap where can you find a coach coaching a client in a very entertaining, slightly disrespectful way? Yeah, it was because it, it got a little disrespectful. Yeah. It was a little cringy yeah. sometimes. I was like, "Woo, he in the hot seat, uh, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, you felt like that uncle or that big cousin yeah. who's like, I'm just trying to help you get to the next level. For and sure. I'm going to ask you the tough questions. Yeah. And I think with this generation um, of young people, who almost feel uncheckable yeah. in a lot of ways yeah. and unaccountable in a lot of ways. I think when you are able to offer that, I think that that's very, very helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, but from, from a creative standpoint, I'm trying to deliver something that people haven't seen, that haven't, they haven't seen. So whatever like we're all doing, and there's like me, you, we interview people, we have amazing questions. Some of us are better than others. Like you're a far better interviewer than a lot of the interviewers I see that these people are on. Um, but we gotta find something that's really, really special, that is very unique, that nobody's doing right now. Yeah. To add to our mix. So that's the only reason I'm doing that because I think there's a generation of people who need a real raw conversation. Yeah. It's not just going to like tell you, you sound crazy. <laughs> Interview somebody like he's like, yo, I'm just now uh, getting focused, but he's been doing his business for two years. You started yeah. two years ago and you're just now getting focused. There's a lot of conversation in there. I mean, you had another guy that you interviewed who says, I come to your, you know, how are you going to tell people about your business? I'm going to tell them about them when I get in front of them. And you said, well, he said, well, I come to the morning meetup every day. And yeah. He's, you're like, I've never heard you. Oh, I'm there before you get there. Right. <laughs> he tried to hit you with that. Like, I'm, I'm there before you, you come yeah, on. I'm yeah, a, I've sure. already did my, my spiel before you got there. You're like, oh, okay. Right. You know? That can't be your only strategy for growth. <laughs> that can't but be. But shout out to Leek. So he, he sat in the hot seat too. Yeah, he did. And he's coming back with like more fruit. He's mm -hmm. coming back with like progress. And he understands that I'm not saying it to embarrass him. I'm yeah. Kind of a little bit because it's entertainment, <laughs> but I'm saying what he needs to hear that nobody's going to tell him. Yeah. And you'll either walk away with your feelings hurt or you'll actually grow. That's why I like my disclaimer is no entrepreneurs were hurt in the recording in of this. In the recording <laughs> of this. Yeah. So you, you're also thinking of changing in another way of how you do interviews. One yeah. of the things you said recently was you want to interview homeless people yeah. and to see how they got there. Yeah. What's your fascination with that? Uh, like I said, just finding the gap because no one else is doing it. Everybody, everybody interviews success. Let's go the other way. Let's interview some failure. Let's interview some failure. Yeah. Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. there's some, there's some stuff that you can unpack in that story. I don't, you know, I think because we live in this culture where everyone loves the glistening lights of mm -hmm. all the success stories, to hear the failure yeah. calls you to the carpet in your own life. A hundred percent. Yeah. I had, yo, this would may have been one of the best lessons I've learned. It was from a homeless man. We're downtown and uh, I'm with like three other guys and it's at night. it had to be like 11, 12 o'clock at night. We're just leaving one of those bars and we're just sitting there talking. You know, after you leave the venue, yeah, you're just talking yeah, to your friends. Yeah. Guy comes up, 
very articulate and says, gentlemen, I do not mean to bother you, but do you guys have any cash you can assist me mm-hmm. with? And it just kind of like it threw me off because he was like very well spoken. He wasn't drunk, wasn't high, yeah. none of that. And I said to the guy, uh, yes, I actually have some cash, but I hope you're not offended, but I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. And uh, I want to know how you got to this point of asking me for money mm. on the street, downtown Atlanta at midnight. And he said, yes, no problem. So I asked him, how'd you get here? So he goes through this story. I'll make the long story short. He said he had a really good job, beautiful family, a corporate job, corporate gig, and you know, was making a lot of money. And he said his coworker started to invite him out to parties. And normally he's like, no, I'm not going, go home to my family. But one time he went and he enjoyed himself. But they're doing cocaine. Mm. And he's like, no, nah, I'm, I'm good on that. But then he kept going to the party, kept going to the party, kept going to the parties. Guess what happened one day? He tried that. He tried it. Yeah. And he said, oh, it's cool. And I'm looking at these guys because I work with them every day. It's not like a crackhead like you see on TV. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, these people are functioning. They're just cool. Yeah, yeah. He said, but eventually he started doing it outside of the parties and doing it just by himself. And then long story short, he wound up for something happened and he got fired. And his wife found out that he was using drugs and packed up his family and left him, with it, left him alone. And he leaned deeper into the drugs and he didn't he didn't have the motivation to go get a job Mm. and now he's sitting here asking me for money on the street yeah and i I told that story at a school one time and i was saying yo what was what was the mistake where did he go wrong and he said well he shouldn't have tried the cocaine Mm. i said that wasn't the mistake the mistake was hanging out with a group of people that are doing the wrong thing Even if you don't feel like you're going to fall into that, eventually it will make you curious. Yeah. Curious. It's going to rub off on you. A hundred percent. Yeah. The mistake was getting in an environment that's not conducive to your success. I'm telling you, I I stopped going to the club after this conversation. I don't go to the clubs. Hmm. I just don't. Like, especially as a married man. And there's not wrong going to the the clubs, right? But for me, my own situation. It's success. not conducive where I'm going. Yeah. Why do I want to go to the club, see a bunch of women who are not my wife? I don't drink. I'm in a club. <laughs> everybody else is drinking. I don't smoke. Everybody else is smoking. And I remember the story. Yeah. Yeah. If you're in an environment yeah. long enough, your environment will change you before you change it. Oof. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Your environment will change you before you change it. For sure. That's money right there. Yeah. That's money. I love that. So. What are you committed to in this season? You're not going to the club. You are not smoking. You ain't yeah. drinking. You ain't getting your lemon peppers and your hookah in Atlanta. <laughs> you don't have no Casamigos with you. No y'all. judgment, y'all. I just, <laughs> it's not good for me. One of the real reasons I don't drink is because every time I drink, I get a headache the yeah. next day. Yeah. And I feel, no matter how much, it's yeah. like the next day I feel terrible. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that was a lot of stuff. Yeah. My body don't take it well. It's okay. The <laughs> fogginess of it is really, really detrimental. Yeah. And then as you get older, it's harder and harder on the recovery. Oh, yeah. For Much sure. Much harder on for the recovery. Sure. So what are you committed to in this season outside of 100,000 podcasters mm-hmm. and building growing social proof to be on Essence next year and yeah. back at BET next year? Can you help year. me with that? You're pretty plugged in. You're connected. <laughs> Congratulations. You're my manager. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> That sounds uh, like a distraction, you know? <laughs> it seemed like an opportunity, but in life, it's really a distraction. <laughs> that's you a bet. see what that's that is? <laughs> um, I am committed right now to um, tapping into how I feel. Mm, are you in therapy? No. Okay. Mm-mm. What's helping you get into that? Uh, I think right now it's just awareness. Mm. Uh, one of my friends, we were on a panel together and he started telling the story and he got choked up and he like started, you could see like tears coming down, he started crying. And I was like, dang, I want to do that. <laughs> How you do that? How you cry? How you do that like that? Oh, I interviewed B. Simone and she's like, yo, sometimes I just cry. Like, she's like, yo, almost every day I'll just cry. I'm like, really? How you do that? 
you like. I don't cry. <laughs> That's okay. It, I have like an even keel life. I don't have high highs and I don't have low lows. So I'm excited about certain things, but it's not like I feel pure joy when a good thing happens. Mm. But the cool part is when something extremely uh, negative happens, I don't feel super bad about that either. But I'm like right in this middle. So um, I want to I want to have I want to go a little lower with disappointments and I want to go a little higher with successes and joys. So this is me just I'm just aware at this moment and there's a moment that happens or a movie. And, you know, at the end of the movie, there's always this moment where you get choked up. If something happens, they're playing the music yeah. and it comes full circle and I'm noticing it now. I'm like, ooh, do I feel something? Did I, feel, I felt something. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> that felt good. I, 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 I almost got emotional. Yeah. A tear didn't fall yet, but I'm working on crying in a movie. So deeper disappointments, mm -hmm. greater joy and success. Yeah. How are you looking to tap into greater, deeper disappointments? I was hoping you had to answer. I have no idea. Well, I'm just in awareness phase right now. Most people are not looking to tap into deeper disappointments. Yeah. Because those deeper disappointments bring up all of those emotions, right? They bring mm. up all the feelings, the inadequacies, the not good enough, not yeah. feeling like enough. And so most people want to steer clear from that. And they want to focus on the joy of success. Yeah, but I think tapping, it, tapping into my feelings, I get all of it. It's, I, don't, I don't think I can choose a side. You know what I mean? How I feel in a moment, I want it to affect me, mm. good or bad. Now, I don't want to fall into depression, Yeah. but I do want to like, again, I don't have a, um, and I'm very uh, uh, empathetic, empathetic, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. very empathetic. I can feel when people are not feeling. Uh, I was actually talking to my, uh, my, my boy at church, Davey, and um, I, I, I was telling him, like, yo, I can talk to people and, like, kind of feel how they feel and encourage them. He said, yo, I cannot talk about, I can't talk to people about their problems too much because I start to take it on. Mm. It becomes like, I start to wear it like a yeah. jacket. Yeah. And I'm saying, I can do it. I can have a conversation and encourage. He said, I can't. I, I got to stay away from it because yeah. I start to wear it. Yeah. So again, I don't want to fall into depression, but this is just a moment in my life of discovery where I'm trying to feel more, especially yeah. I got two daughters. And that's where I was going with this yeah. because you have two daughters, you have a little son yeah. who's you, you yeah. said that's Oh, for sure, you. that's my little man. And then your other little girl, that's like your best friend. BFF, for sure. So what type of feelings do they bring out and how do those like transport and transpire into your business? Um, I don't know if they trans transpire into my business, but I've never felt love like this. I can honestly say I love my wife for sure. But and I love my parents, mm -hmm. but real love for another person who absolutely needs me. And there's no there's no agenda. I, I married my wife for certain reasons, right? You said you married up. Yeah, oh, 100%. <laughs> married my wife for certain reasons. She married me for certain reasons. Yeah. I love her for certain reasons, I, I would, or else I would have married her. She married me because she liked what, she, what I had, right? But my children, they love me because they love me. No agenda, no, like unadulterated love. Yeah. And I feel that, like there's no reason I love you. Mm. I just love you. And like when I walk home, she's like, daddy. And she's like, come like full, full force running at me, yeah. daddy. And I'm like, yo, this is a connection that I've never ever felt in my life. Mm. So I think the birth of my first daughter, um, I met my, my oldest when she was like seven, seven years yeah. old. Mm -hmm. And, um, but the birth of my first daughter, is leading me down this journey of wanting to feel because mm -hmm. I know there's going to be a day where her heart is broken yeah. and she's really yeah. down and she doesn't want a motivational dad. Yeah. She wants someone who can get on that level emotionally with her and yeah. just sit here and let's just cry together. Yeah. And I'm preparing myself to be able to cry <laughs> with my children. <laughs> You're preparing yourself to be able to yeah. cry. It may sound strange. I don't know if this sounds weird to y'all, 
but I just it's uh it's a it's where I'm at in my life yeah I think it is yeah. I think you're pulling back the layers yeah, of self-awareness for sure and I think as we get older our our goals change right yeah. the ideals in our lives change because now we're we're thinking of the deeper meanings of our lives yeah. we're no longer just chase, chasing the bag right we're looking for the purpose for to sure. our lives so what has been the biggest lesson that your daughter has taught you or your um, son? Patience for sure. Mm. Patience. Um, they're, they're babies, right? Um, so I can't expect them to do what I say when I say it. <laughs> and I realize that sometimes they're not doing what I say because they don't understand. And now that kind of transpires into business because I can have somebody on my team, I can yeah. tell them to do some, give them an, an assignment, but even though they hear what I said, maybe they didn't understand what they I said, it. and it's not their fault, I just didn't explain it properly. Mm. So that's one thing that I'm learning, like people understand at the level that they understand, not at the level that I'm telling them, or yeah. even at my own understanding. Yeah. So that's for sure one thing that I'm learning, like people trying to get through to somebody and you gotta speak their particular language. Yeah. So people understand at their level yeah. of understanding. They bring their own perspectives and ideas yeah. into whatever game we're playing, yeah. right? So your children have taught you patience, but what is life teaching you right now? Uh, you can't control as much as you think. Ooh, baby. <laughs> it's out of my hands. It's uh, above me now. It's above me now. <laughs> it's above me now. <laughs> Man, yeah, life, life is teaching me so much, man, um, that no matter how loving you are, people just aren't going to love you back. People will attack you for no reason. Mm. Um, That's so true. Yeah. Listen, social media gives everybody the license oh, yeah. to have an opinion Absolutely. about you. I'm like, have I met you? Let me look at your Instagram profile. Have right. I met, do I know you? And why <laughs> does this person who has a uh, who has no profile picture, <laughs> they're not even following anybody. You're not. You're not even following me. You're not even following me. <laughs> why does what they say yeah. affect me so much? Yeah, and it does. It, it does. I recently um, had a woman make a comment on a reel, and. She talked about me. She talked about my mama on the reel. And mm. I said, I had to go. I said, well, wait, wait a minute. Do I know you? <laughs> explicit and explicit. Do I know you? <laughs> like, have we met before? Like, did I take your man? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> just playing. Ha -ha. <laughs> you never know. Though. It'd, be the, it'd be the person who created an account just to come at you. You ain't even know. Like, you didn't what, take my man. What happened? But. I, you know, back in the day, if you would have called me, oh, baby, I would have ripped you a new one and mm. then blocked, you yeah. know, after I ripped you. Oh, they got to get ripped a new one first. <laughs> you got to get like. it first. <laughs> now it's like, just block, because yeah. I don't even have the, the capacity to give you anything, because as much yeah. as it's going to take me to give you that, I could be giving that to something else yeah. in this very moment. 100%. And that's been the thing that has been able to like keep my sanity on social. But don't worry, it did sting me a little yeah. bit. Like, the question is why? Though? Yeah. Why does it sting me? Why? I think sometimes it, it plays on our insecurities. Mm. It plays on the things that people have always said about you. You know, wow. things that people have said, whether it's regarding your looks or whatever it is, if people make those comments and you've been hearing them since you were a child or whatever, now I'm triggered, yeah. you know, and now it plays into like, now I got to call my sister and be like, let me tell you what the hair just right, happened, right. right? You know, I got to go into that, but it immediately starts with the block because I have to say, I don't even know this person. Yeah. This person doesn't even know me. They're not even following me. Some people are. Like, yeah. some people are following me, and I'm like, you will not be following me anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you will be, what happened to her page? Did it? <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. no post available mm -hmm. <laughs> all yeah. of a sudden. But I think it does. I think, you know, sometimes it plays into our insecurities. It plays into the moments when we feel inadequate about yeah. ourselves. And if they catch us at that one moment where yeah. we're at that low, low, you know, when we're experiencing that low moment in our lives. Yeah. We're not, I'm not in the joy moment today. Yeah. 
I'm in the low moment and today you said something to me mm -hmm. that took me to a lower point. Yeah. And I think that's what's so hard about social. I think that's also why people have the fear of starting. Yeah. Because so many people are thinking about, well, what will they say about me yeah. if I start, you yeah. know? I think those are some of the opportunities where life is trying to teach us something. Oh yeah. Because in the moment it happens. But if we can step outside of the moment just for a second and figure out what life is teaching us right here. Yeah. Why does this person's opinion matter? Yeah. And I think that may lead you on a kind of a QA and a session with yourself. Yeah. And you for learn sure. something. For sure. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, for sure. So you learn something about yourself. Chaos, clarity, growth, prosperity, mm -hmm. abundance, all of the things since you started this journey in yeah. 2010. What piece of advice would you give your 20 year old self? 20 year old David, mm. who's out here trying to rap <laughs> and go work at Olive Garden and Cheesecake yeah. Factory. What um, would you tell him? Stop stopping. Mm. Don't worry about the, don't worry about the result. Mm. The only result you should care about is how you're changing. The bigger you become, the better things around you get. Yeah. Um, and I was just, especially as a child, 21, 22, I was a little boy. I was like, I was this big. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, things just set you off or yeah. you keep going after the, the new shiny thing or um, you're telling the people that you're dating one thing, but you really feel another way. Yeah. I was, a, I was immature. I was a kid. Yeah. yeah. So um, just grow just focus on becoming yeah. better in as many areas as you can attack right now yeah. of being better just continue to grow you'll be fine what's the one area you would tell your 20 year old self to attack first um is insecurities mm. um you can't get everybody to like you because i really really and not as much now but it's really really bad up until about Three years ago, two, three years, I really, really, people's opinion of me matters. I think it's something about hitting 35, though. I mm. think it's that something that there's that shift between 33 and 35. I yeah. think that you really start to like, I don't care yeah. what you think. And then when you get 40, you really are like, who? <laughs> right, right, right. Who are you here? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so I, it was really bad. And, I mean, out of all these years, I realize there's no one that I can please. Mm. I just can't. You know what I mean? And if I do help you out right now, you'll be happy with me today. But if I don't help you out the next time, you'll forget about the first time and you'll hate me again. <laughs> so it's like you can't. You're chasing people's approval. Yeah. And um, yeah, I wish I'd have learned that earlier in life. Stop chasing people's approval. Yeah. They're not all going to like you. For sure. All right, so then what piece of advice would you give your children? Mm. Or what do you want your children to know about you? Um, I guess two different questions. Uh, I want my children to just continue to develop, uh, treat people well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you said the question was, what do I want them to know about you? I want them to know that um, their dad always operates in integrity. So I'm not going to tell somebody something intentionally lying. So you know, like back in the day, when a bill collector calls, you pick up the phone, <laughs> your mom's like, I'm not here. And then the kid's like, yeah, mommy's not here. Well, that's saying something about you. It's telling your child something about you that mm. you don't have the best integrity. Mm. You're willing to lie. I'm not gonna, I was, it was, a, it was like a week ago, I told, uh, my daughter, after dinner, she can have some candy. And uh, she ate her dinner, and she's not even thinking about the candy at this point. And I told my wife, I was like, I told her she can have some candy after dinner. And I was like, no, she can't. No, she can't. And I'm like, yeah. I, I already told her, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I don't want her to think that her dad's word doesn't mean anything. Mm. So even if it, like, I... I want my kids to know that their dad operates in integrity. I'm not gonna lie for a favorable opinion. You're not gonna see me uh, getting over on anybody. Yeah. Um, that's the one, th if I had to pick one thing, I would for sure want them to know that about me. That integrity. they can trust their dad. That they can trust you. Yeah. 
I love that. And you've become a trusted voice for so many people. Yeah. I've enjoyed this conversation with you. you I really feel both. like I could like, talk to you even more. But you know, you kept doing this. I was like, oh, he getting real comfortable in this conversation. Oh, no, this feels good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I said. I said, we could keep talking. <laughs> but I've enjoyed this conversation. You guys, stay connected. Sleep is for suckers. You can follow David Shams on Sleep is for Suckers on Instagram and all social platforms. Be sure to subscribe to the Social Proof podcast Please. he's got a master class that he's doing to help you launch your podcast but he's also doing a whole summit in miami Facts. so look if you are not subscribed go ahead and check him out here's what i want you to do like comment subscribe subscribe to the vault village we got more inspiring content on the way to empower you to live your highest and best life until next time y'all i'm your girl brandy harvey eat well give a damn move your body every day peace